4 Steps to Clean Brass, right now on Pirate Firearms and Reloading. Hey folks, so today I wanted to just show you quickly uh, my sort of 4 step process for getting brass clean. Um, this applies to rifle brass, pistol brass, anything basically. Um, I've sort of developed a bit of a process over the years, it always works for me. Um, so I want to explain a little bit of the, the theory of why I do it that way and um, go through these 357 Magnum cases. So um, I just purchased a, well, new to me, second hand rifle and the previous owner gave me um, 50 once fired cases and 50 fully loaded cases. So these haven't been prepped. Um, Anyway, I'll just dump them into the inline fabrication bin. Um, today I will be using the um, inline fabrication case ejector kit. I've covered this in a previous video if you want to see the, the finer details of that. And ironically I have my, my Lee Universal Rifle decapping die. Now, funnily enough, flash holes are the same size so it actually works perfectly fine on these 357 Magnum cases. Um, I do like to remove the, the primers now because this is the dirty stage of, of the reloading process really is getting this brass nice and clean and I'd rather remove the primers here now than wait until I've got my turret press up here and pop them out just before I go to load them. Obviously with a turret press having the four stages and one operation per, per stage I don't get the chance to clean that primer pocket. Now, if you're just shooting training ammunition or whatever, you're possibly not worried about cleaning that primer pocket, but I always like to. I am a little bit OCD, as you may have worked out by now from the previous videos. So I'm gonna go ahead and start depriming this. So this die basically works exactly the same as it would do on rifle cases. Um, Just like that folks, I've now deep primed 50 cases. I did 10 before I turned the cameras on, so you've seen about 40 and I will, will have sped that up too because nobody wants to sit here and watch me operate a press all day. So now comes a little bit of personal preference. Um, the primer pockets in this brass, so this is American Eagle. Um, so I'll bring this over here to this camera. So as you can see, the Primer pockets are not bad. Um, this is, you know, federal um, brass, or well, it's American Eagle branded, but it is obviously federal brass um, and federal prime, so it is pretty clean in terms of primers. Um, but I now like to clean that flash hole now before I put it in the tumbler, and the reason being is you're prolonging the life of your media. Um, I use a uh, corn cob media, dried corn cob husk, I think is the technical term, um, and it does have a life. There's there's two reasons it degrades. Um, it's it's not it's a little bit sharp technically. Um, it's not sharp to the touch or anything like that, but it's sharp in terms of removing the the, the dirt and, and stuff from the cases. Um, and obviously it will become blunt and dull over time. The other thing is it also becomes dirty over time and there will be a point where you'll have to tip that media out. Now I've probably put thousands and thousands of cases through the current batch of media um, and it's still going strong. Um, it doesn't look dirty visually, um, so I'm just gonna keep it going. Um, when I start to see diminishing returns, I'll swap it out and to be fair, I'm probably gonna notice a massive change. <laughs> Um, and you know, it's cheap so you don't really have to be stingy on it but if you're looking to save a little bit of money you can do it that way. The other thing is if the primer pockets are relatively clean like this and say you're not going to spend the extra time to clean the primer pockets the tumbler will clean a lot of that out. Now if you're wet tumbling um, that seems to clean most of it out. I personally haven't moved over to the wet tumbling yet I'm a little bit nervous about the stainless steel media um, particularly like if you were to get some caught in a flash hole and it was to end up down your barrel, probably ruin it. Um, and to be honest, I've got a you know a few kilos of corn cob media left, so I might as well use that. 
So I'm not going to bore you and show you all of this, but essentially what I'm going to do is just quickly clean out the primer pockets on each of these bricks of brass. Now you can obviously use the standard little hand tools as well, that works perfectly fine, um, but in the interest of, of not taking you know, hours to do this job, um, the lime and case prep centre really comes into its own. Um, intend on doing a, a full video on this a little bit later on and in one of my other videos recently somebody asked about the charge master um, definitely going to do a full in-depth review on that one too at a later date <laughs> As you can see here, here's a dirty primer pocket. And there it is after it's cleaned out. All this stuff here on the case head is all loose and that will all come off in the tumbler as well. So will any residual that's in the primer pocket. Okay folks, so that's step two done. I've cleaned out the primer pockets. Like I said, you can do that after um, putting your brass in the tumbler, um, but I choose to do it. Right, so I happen to use the Frankfurt Arsenal quick and easy case tumbler. Um, like I said, I have corn cob media in here. Um, I think it's Frankfurt Arsenal corn cob media as well. Um, there are other sources of this media out here as well. Um, there's nothing particularly sophisticated about it, it's just chunks um, that are, like I said, they're, they're not sharp to the touch, but they, um, they're enough to polish up the case. Now, this is step number three. This is my secret weapon. This is the Dylan Rapid Polish. Um, so it's ammonia free, so unlike products like um, Brasso and things, it won't actually degrade the brass. Um, but it works kind of in a similar way and Dylan also say here on the back you can polish things like you know lamps and mirrors and frames and things like that. Um, you can actually put this on a clean cloth and rub the brass as well. But they say what you can do, and this is the whole point of it, um, pour three to four catfuls directly into the tumbling media and tumble for one to two hours. Now, I've already done this over the years, and actually a couple of the bits of media you can actually see have, have been coated with this um, purpley colored liquid. Um, and you do not need much at all. Um, it's this very odd, you can see it around the neck there, um, like a, a pale purple color. Um, now I'm gonna take the liberty of, of kind of guessing how much a couple of catfuls are. Um, and like I said, because I've done this with this tumbler in the past, I don't actually put the full three to four catfuls in every time. Um, so there's my 50 cases of 357 Magnum. Um, and I'm gonna chuck this in. I'm probably gonna let it tumble for about an hour, see how it looks. Um, if I think it needs a little bit more, I'll give it that additional hour. Um, and then I'll come back and I'll show you the results. Okay folks, so I've let this tumble for about an hour. Um, I could potentially leave this for two hours without too much of an issue. Um, I've chosen to do an hour just because it makes my life easier, it's a bit quicker. Um, so they've come out pretty well. Now, I have to confess, this is once fired brass. I don't know how long since it's been fired. I suspect quite a while, um, given speaking to the, the previous owner of the, the firearm and of course this brass then. So as you can see though, they're more than respectable. They're all nice and shiny. The primer pockets, if they will focus, are all nice and clean. And 99% of the powder residue is gone from inside the case mouth so I should be getting close to full capacity with this brass. There's still a little bit of, um, you can see the black line and the extractor groove there, there's still a little bit of carbon and build up in there 
But overall, that's perfectly acceptable as um, far as I'm concerned. If I truly wanted shiny brass, well, first of all, I'd get to the brass pretty quickly after I'd fired it. Um, don't let that stuff set in. The other thing that works really well is your basic microfiber cloth. Um, I have been known to occasionally just grab one and give it a quick hand polish as well. Now this is going to the extreme. Um, most people don't care this much for pistol brass. Um, certainly if that was rifle brass um, and I got to it quickly, it would turn out a bit better. But the, the Dylan Rapid Polish um, combined with the Corn Cob Media does do a really nice job. Um, it won't go get rid of things like uh, watermarks. So particularly if you were shooting on a rainy day um, and you know your brass did hit you know the wet grass or, or the wet you know floor of the range, um, it wouldn't get a, get rid of that tarnishing unless you truly polished. And you don't need to. You just want to get it nice and clean so when it runs through your dyes, it's not putting grit into your dyes. So you're protecting and prolonging the life of your dyes. And if you look after your dyes, they should last through your entire lifetime. And you know you should be able to hand those down to you know the next generation as well. So those are my four really quick steps to getting good looking shiny brass. Um, now that that's basically what I would call clean, I can now obviously filter this all out. Um, I do have a bit of a sieve sometimes when I don't have much brass, I'll just dig it out by hand. Um, I'll leave the lid off, I'll plug the, the um, tumbler back into the power. Um, and I'll just sift through it with my hands. Um, I know there's exactly 50 cases in here. Um, I'll probably just sift this one out because it'll be quicker, but if I'm doing, you know, a small amount, 10 or 15, I'll, I'll sift through it with my hands. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I release new videos every Friday, so hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on anything. See you in the next one.